Complex numbers can be rather confusing since we're now introducing numbers of the form a plus bi where i is the square root of minus 1. We call this the imaginary unit such that its square is negative 1. When we add two complex numbers a plus bi with c plus di, we're going to get another complex number of the form a plus c plus b plus d all times i. Likewise, when multiplying two complex numbers, we can apply the rainbow method to obtain AC plus AD times I plus BC times I plus BD times I squared. And since I squared equals to negative 1, we can replace the I squared with a negative 1. We can now simplify some of the terms and collect them to get another complex number of the form AC minus BD plus AD plus BC all times I. But the golden question to ask is, what do they represent visually? Numbers of this form are known as the Cartesian form, and we can represent them using points in a two-dimensional plane, very similar to what we have seen in vectors. We can represent the complex number 3 plus i via the vector from the origin to the point 3, 1, and the complex number 1 plus 2i via the vector from the origin to the point 1, 2. Adding complex numbers is akin to vector addition. So we'll take the 3 plus i, we'll slide it over via 1 plus 2i, and then connect the origin to the final point, which is 4 plus 3i. If we now relabel 3 plus i and 1 plus 2i with z and w respectively, then adding z and w gives us z plus w, and geometrically, it is akin to vector addition. Similar to vectors, the negative of a complex number can be represented by a point which is reflected about the origin. And when we consider the quantity z minus w, it is the same as taking z plus negative of w. The final landing point, so to speak, can therefore be seen as the complex number z minus w. So complex number addition and subtraction are relatively straightforward to visualize. However, can we visualize complex number multiplication? We've done the computation for complex number multiplication before, which is a combination of cross terms. And one special case is by considering a plus bi times a minus bi. We can apply the complex number multiplication formula clean up with a little bit of algebra, and obtain the quantity a squared plus b squared. Knowing this calculation is surprisingly useful in helping us calculate division of complex numbers. Since the denominator here is c plus di, the trick here is to multiply the fraction by c minus di divided by c minus di. We can combine using some complex number multiplication, and the numerator would simplify according to our usual rules, but the denominator will simplify according to what we discovered just now, and c plus d squared is just a real number. We can simplify the expression even more with a little bit of algebra to obtain yet another complex number. So complex number addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division will give us complex numbers. But while addition and subtraction are easy to visualize, can we visualize complex number multiplication? But before we answer that question, let's see what else we can do using these four operations of complex numbers. Consider the quadratic equation z squared plus 2z plus 5 equals to 0. To solve this, we can simply apply the quadratic formula. This time, the expression inside the square root is a negative number. When working with real numbers, there is no number whose square is negative. But working with complex numbers, we can write negative of 16 as 4 squared times negative 1. This allows us to pull out the 4 as with usual third properties, and the square root of negative 1 is simply i. Doing a little more algebra, z must equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Here's another quadratic equation, z squared plus iz plus 1 minus 3i equals to 0. Once again, we can apply the quadratic formula and simplify some of the terms therein. And this time we're a little stuck because we don't exactly know what the square root of negative 5 plus 12i is. 
While it may seem a little daunting at first, we can actually find the square root of complex numbers. The square root of negative 5 plus 12i will be equal to a plus bi, where a and b are numbers which we want to obtain. What this means is that squaring on both sides, a plus bi all squared must equal negative 5 plus 12i. We can expand the left hand side with a little bit of algebra and replace the i squared with negative 1. And now we have a complex number on the left equaling a complex number on the right. The only way for this to be possible is if the corresponding parts are equal to one another. In other words, the coefficient of i, that is 2ab, and 12 must equal to each other. We can simplify to get b equals to 6 over a, but we also know that the other part of the number must correspond. In other words, a squared minus b squared must equal negative 5. But since b equals 6 over a, we can substitute b and simplify the expression using some algebra. We obtain the equation a to the fourth plus 5a squared minus 36 equals 0. And while fourth degree polynomials are not easy to factor in general, here we can regard a to the fourth as the square of a squared. So this is in some sense a quadratic equation in a squared, which means we can apply the quadratic formula where a squared is what we are solving. This gives us two solutions, negative 9 and 4, and this time a is a real number, and we cannot square a real number to get a negative number. This allows us to reject the negative 9. We can now conclude that a is either plus or minus 2, substitute that into b to get plus or minus 3, which tells us that the square root of negative 5 plus 12i is 2 plus 3i. If we square 2 plus 3i, a quick calculation will give us negative 5 plus 12i, which does indeed make 2 plus 3i the square root of negative 5 plus 12i. We do have a general formula for the square root of a complex number, and perhaps you can show that this is indeed a case as an exercise. An important notion in complex numbers is the notion of conjugates. This arises when we take a complex number z and reflect it about the real axis. We'll denote this by z star, and the formal definition is that the conjugate of a plus bi is the exact same expression but the plus flipped over to minus. This alone gives us many conjugate properties that are relatively compatible with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we can illustrate one of these results visually. Let's represent the complex number w and consider z plus w. And we can take the conjugate of z plus w. On the other hand, if we first take the conjugate of w, and now we add z star with w star, we will end up at the same location, which means that z plus w all star equals z star plus w star. Conjugates are really useful when it comes to solving equations. If we have a polynomial with solution z and coefficients being real numbers, then we automatically know that z star must solve this equation as well. This is known as the conjugate root theorem, and it helps us solve higher order polynomial equations. For example, suppose we know that the complex number 1 plus 2i satisfies this polynomial. Since all of its coefficients are real, we know that the conjugate 1 minus 2i also satisfies this equation. This tells us that if we subtract 1 plus 2i, z minus 1 plus 2i equals to 0, and likewise z minus 1 minus 2i equals to 0. This means multiplying them gives us 0, and we can expand the left-hand side using complex number arithmetic as discussed earlier. These tell us that the quadratic expression z squared minus 2z plus 5 equals 0. By the factor theorem, it is a factor 
of the fourth degree polynomial. This allows us to expand the right hand side and comparing the coefficients, we can obtain a, b, and c. We can back substitute the values and obtain the other solutions via z squared minus 6z plus 25 equals 0. While we could use the quadratic formula to solve this equation, we can also complete the square to get these solutions, which tells us that all of the solutions to the fourth degree polynomial equation are 1 plus 2i, 1 minus 2i, 3 plus 4i, and 3 minus 4i. Now that we've seen some of the utility of complex numbers, let's return to our question of visualizing complex number multiplication. Consider the complex number a plus bi. Instead of considering the x and y coordinates, we could consider the distance from the origin. This is denoted by r and is calculated via the square root of a squared plus b squared. Indeed, this is motivated by the Pythagorean theorem. Likewise, we could also consider the angle that this complex number makes with the positive real axis. Since the run is a and the rise is b, we can calculate theta via solving tangent of theta equals to b over a, where we require theta to lie between negative pi and positive pi. We call r the modulus of z, and theta the argument of z. Interestingly enough, from this perspective, we see that the cosine of theta is actually equal to a over r, which gives us r cosine of theta equals to a, and similarly r sine theta equals to b. This means that we can plug in these expressions into the complex number a plus bi, factor the r, and this is known as the polar form of a complex number. We could in fact use a little bit of calculus to obtain that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine theta. This allows us to compactify the expression even further via r e to the i theta. This is known as the exponential form of a complex number. But knowing the exponential form leads us directly to answering our question. Let's consider another complex number with modulus s and argument omega. Now we can multiply the complex numbers together. But multiplying complex numbers in this manner is really simple. r multiplied by s gives us rs. And since we are multiplying the exponentials, their powers would just add with each other. Factoring the i, we obtain the exponential form of zw. But this tells us that the argument of zw is theta plus omega. This means we just need to add the arguments to get the argument of the new complex number zw. Furthermore, the modulus of zw is rs. This is the product of the moduli of the constituent complex numbers, which means we just need to stretch out the complex number by the modulus of the other complex number. This is the geometric representation of complex number multiplication. Likewise, we can obtain various exponential form properties, and something remarkable happens from this point of view. Now, when we rotate by an angle of pi over 2, we land up at i, which means that i is equal to e to the i times pi over 2, and we can interpret i as a rotation by 90 degrees. If we rotate a second time, we're essentially multiplying i two times, which gives us i squared, which equals e to the i pi. Furthermore, by our definition of i, i squared equals to negative 1. This simplifies to e to the i pi plus 1 equals to 0, which is the famous Euler's identity, arguably one of the most famous formulae in high school mathematics. And finally, exponential forms introduce us some really useful tricks when solving problems in complex numbers. For example, if we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, we can employ the exponential forms and work out the algebra to simplify to r squared. This is nothing more than the modulus of z squared. 
The power of this formula arises when the modulus of z equals 1. This simplifies to z times z star equals to 1 and can be expressed if z equals e to the i theta or cosine of theta plus i sine theta. In both cases, z has modulus 1. If z were to be expressed in Cartesian form instead, then we can rewrite this condition via a squared plus b squared equals to 1, inspired by Pythagoras' theorem once again. So the modulus of z being equal to 1 plays a crucial role in problem solving. For example, if we know that the modulus of z equals to 1, and we are trying to find the modulus of z plus 4i all over 1 minus 4i times z, how will we go about doing it? At first glance, it seems rather challenging and daunting. But we can first write out the expression inside the modulus symbols and wonder to ourselves, since the modulus of z equals 1, z times z star equals to 1. Where in our expression do we see a 1? Well, sitting right there, and it seems rather innocent. But since 1 equals to z times z star, let's replace the 1 with z times z star. We can factor the z in the denominator, and we can do a little bit of algebra to observe something rather fascinating. Since 4 equals to 4 star, and negative i equals to i star, z star plus 4 times negative i equals z star plus 4 star times i star. That expression simplifies to the conjugate. So taking modulus on both sides, we can do a bit of algebra. And since the modulus of the conjugate equals the modulus of the original, the modulus of z plus 4i star equals z plus 4i. We can now do a bit of cancellations. And since the modulus of z is 1, we can simplify this via 1. And all that hard work to tell us that the modulus of z plus 4i over 1 minus 4iz equals 1. Another trick that the exponential form affords us is by adding these complex numbers. If we take a complex number e to the i theta and add its conjugate, the result is not as clean but still can be considerably compact. We can express this expression using Euler's identity and doing a bit of algebra simplifies to 2 times cosine of theta. Likewise, when we take e to the i theta and subtract it by its conjugate, we can replace using Euler's identity once again and simplify to get 2i sine of theta. These come in handy when we need to calculate, for example, the modulus and the argument of e to the 5i plus e to the i. The trick here is to obtain the complex number that in some sense lies between 5i and i. In this case, that complex number is 3i. We're now going to factor e to the 3i from both expressions to get e to the 2i added to its conjugate. And we can use the exact same strategy to simplify this expression. We can express e to the 2i and e to the negative 2i using Euler's identity. And doing a bit of algebra gives us e to the 3i times 2 times of cosine of 2. This means that e to the 5i plus e to the i has modulus 2 times cosine of 2 and argument 3. By asking what we can do with the square root of negative 1, we obtain the key techniques of complex numbers in a nutshell.